how would you recommend a person learn math? So somebody who's young or somebody my age or somebody older who've taken a bunch of math but wants to rediscover the beauty of math and maybe integrate it into their work more so in the research space and so, and, and so on. Is there something you could say about the process of uh, incorporating mathematical thinking into your life? I mean, the, th the thing is, it's in part a journey of self-knowledge. You have to know what's gonna work for you and that's gonna be different for different people. So there are totally people who at any stage of life just start reading math textbooks. That is a thing that you can do and it works for some people and not for others. Um, for others, a gateway is, you know, I always recommend like the books of Martin Gardner, another sort of person we haven't talked about, but who also like Conway embodies that spirit of play. Um, he wrote a column in Scientific American for decades called Mathematical Recreations, and there's such joy in it and such fun. Um, and these books, the columns are collected into books, and the books are old now, but for each generation of people who discover them, they're completely fresh. And they give a totally different way into the subject than reading a formal textbook, which for some people would be the right uh, thing to do. And, you know, working contest style problems, too. Those are bound to books, like especially like Russian and Bulgarian problems, right? There's book after book of problems from those contexts. That's going to motivate some people. Um, for some people, it's going to be like watching well-produced videos, like a totally different format. Like, I feel like I'm not answering your question. I'm sort of saying there's no one answer. And like, it's a journey where you figure out what resonates with you. For some people, it's the self-discovery is trying to figure out why is it that I want to know? Okay, I'll tell you a story. Once when I was in grad school, I was very frustrated with my like lack of knowledge of a lot of things, as we all are, because no matter how much we know, we don't know much more. And going to grad school means just coming face to face with like the incredible overflowing vault of your ignorance, right? So I told uh, Joe Harris, who was an algebraic geometer, a professor in my department, I was like, I really feel like I don't know enough and I should just like take a year of leave and just like read EGA, the holy textbook, Elements de Géométrie Algébrique, like, the elements of algebraic geometry, this like, I'm just gonna, I, I feel like I don't know enough, so I'm just gonna sit and like read this like 1500 page, many volume yeah. book. Um, and he was like, and the Professor Harris was like, that's a really stupid idea. And I was like, why is that a stupid idea? Then I would know more algebraic geometry. He's like, because you're not actually gonna do it. Like you learn, I mean, he knew me well enough to say like, you're gonna learn because you're gonna be working on a problem. And then there's gonna be a fact from EGA you need in order to solve your problem that you wanna solve. And that's how you're gonna learn it. You're not gonna learn it without a problem to bring you into it. And so for a lot of people, I think if you're like, I'm trying to understand machine learning and I'm like, I can see that there's sort of some mathematical technology that I don't have. I think you like let that problem that you actually care about drive your learning. I mean, one thing I've learned from advising students, you know, math is really hard. In fact, anything that you do right is hard. Um, and because it's hard, like you might sort of have some idea that somebody else gives you, oh, I should learn X, Y, and Z. Well, if you don't actually care, you're not going to do it. You might feel like you should. Maybe somebody told you you should. But I think you have to hook it to something that you actually care about. So for a lot of people, that's the way in. You have an engineering problem you're trying to handle. You have a physics problem you're trying to handle. Uh, you have a machine learning problem you're trying to handle. Let that, not a kind of abstract idea of what the curriculum is, drive your mathematical learning. And also just a, as a brief comment that math is hard, there, there's a sense to which hard is a feature, not a bug, in the sense that, again, this maybe this is my own learning preference, but I think it's of value to fall in love with the process of doing something hard, overcoming it, and becoming a better person because of it. Like I hate running, I hate exercise to bring it down to like the simplest hard. And I enjoy the part once it's done. The person I feel like for the re in the rest of the day, once I've accomplished it, the actual process, especially the process of getting started in the initial, like it really, I don't feel like doing it. And I, I really have, <laughs> the way I feel about running is the way I feel about really anything difficult to, in the intellectual space, especially in mathematics, but also just something that requires like holding a bunch of concepts in your mind with some uncertainty, like where this, the terminology or the notation is not very clear. And so you have to kind of hold all those things together and like keep pushing forward through the frustration of really 
like obviously not understanding certain like parts of the picture, like you have giant missing parts of the picture and still not giving up. It's the same way I feel about running. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's something about falling in love with the feeling of after you went through the journey of not having a complete picture at the end, having a complete picture, and then you get to appreciate the beauty and just remembering that it sucked for a long time and how great it felt when you uh, figured it out, at least at the basic. That's not sort of research thinking, because with research, you probably also have to enjoy the dead ends. <laughs> with uh, with learning math from a textbook or from a video, there's a I nice- I don't think you have to enjoy the dead ends, but I think you have to accept the dead ends. Let me, let's, let's put it that way. Well, yeah, enjoy the suffering of it. So <laughs> I, I do, <laughs> The way I think about it, I, I do, uh, there's an uh, app. I don't enjoy the suffering. It pisses me off, but I accept that it's part of the process. It's interesting. There's a lot of ways to kind of deal with that dead end. Um, there's a guy who's an ultramarathon runner, Navy SEAL, David Goggins, who kind of, I mean, there's a certain philosophy of like, most people would quit here. And so if most people would quit here, and I don't, I'll have an opportunity to discover something beautiful that others haven't yet. So like any, any, any feeling that really sucks, it's like, okay, most people would would just like go do something smarter. If I stick with this, um, I will discover a new garden of uh, fruit trees that I can pick. Okay, you say that, but like, what about the guy who like wins the Nathan's hot dog eating contest every year? Like when he eats his 35th hot dog, he like correctly says like, okay, most people would stop here. Like, <laughs> are you like lauding that he's like, no, I'm going to eat the 36th hot dog? I am, okay. I am. Okay. In, the in the long arc of history, that, <laughs> that man is onto something.